What's poppin' guys? Just got out of jail. I mean like literally I got caught in the mall. They put break and enter on me. I'm in deep trouble, okay guys? You may have heard of Jason Etia. He's a YouTube star with legions of followers. He recently went to Disney World in Florida for a little R&R, &R, but he left feeling like a criminal. And Forrest uploaded on January 18th, 2018, just days after Logan Paul was getting exposed for going to the suicide forest. That's right, Jay Stacy tried to capitalize this. I wanna be a big YouTuber, bro, so chill. You guys have to understand that this is not a normal thing for someone to ask of someone in a relationship. She was actually jealous of me talking to this girl. I said, why are you jealous of a 14 year old girl who's been my fan for the last three years? You're fucking psycho. You are honest to God crazy. I never know how to start these things. Okay, J Station. J Station, aka Jason ETA, was born on February 14th, 1990, making him an Aquarius born on Valentine's Day, which is like super unfair to anyone who enjoys that holiday. He was born in Ottawa, Canada with his sister Jacqueline. For J Station's childhood, it really wasn't the best. His parents were super abusive. Good town, but he would associate himself with bad people. Even at school, he would also get bullied. And it wasn't until Jason was about 16 years old that he started to hang around with the wrong group of people. He started getting into a lot of trouble with the law, as well as dropping out of high school in ninth grade. And then when he was 17, he actually ran away from home because as I said, his home life was super abusive. Continued with his life of crime until he was aged 20. That is when he realized that he needed to turn his life around and so he decided to join the army. He was in the army for about a year and then when he got out, he met up up with the bad people that he was hanging around with before and decided to just go straight back into his old habits once again. Now between this time period of 20 years old and 26 years old, Jay Station said that he was in prison for some time during that time period. I'm not sure for what, he just kind of glanced over it in a video once before. When he got out, he decided to get a job at Costco with his mother. He started his YouTube career in late 2015, early 2016, but all of those videos are taken down. He would prank aka harass his other Costco workers and basically post them up on YouTube. Costco actually asked him to take down the videos because it didn't represent their brand. He complied and he took down the videos, but a fellow coworker who used to work with J Station actually made a Facebook post. And I don't know if this is true or not. This is completely hypothetical. This is literally just what he said in this Facebook post. He said that J Station was the number one most complained about in that store, as well as harassing other coworkers, like I just said. Wait, wait, do you guys hear that? What's that noise? Is that... Is that our first sponsor? We have a sponsor. We have a sponsor! We have a sponsor for this video. Our very first sponsor. Oh my god. Take it away. Take it away. Take I'm taking it away. I'm taking it away. So I just want to give a big, big thank you to Sempered for sponsoring this video. Now, if you don't know what Sempered is, it's basically a monthly subscription fragrance service that has over 600 brands ranging from high-end like Gucci, Versace, and Prada to indie brands like The Harmonist and Confessions of a Rebel. Fragrances are also unisex and work directly with the brand so you know what you're getting is 100% authentic. Each fragrance, you will get a 30-day supply so you make sure that you love the fragrance before committing to the full bottle. And if you're really into it, you could also upgrade to two to three bottles a month. This month, I tried out Kenzie by Kenzie and Daisy by Marc Jacobs. Both of these scents honestly smell so good and I'm so glad that I bought it before committing to a full bottle because it's a little expensive. Scentbird has fragrances like The Harmonist on their website that typically cost around $295. 
And imagine spending that much money on a fragrance you didn't even like. That would be embarrassing. But instead, what you do is you use my code Haley at the link down below to get 30% off your very first month, making it only $11. Remember like last year when the Daisy by Marc Jacobs came out and then the commercial of those girls going through the garden, like the sunlight and just like having the time of their life. I was like, God, I wish I could be that. And thanks to Scentbird, I can finally fulfill those dreams. This is the Daisy by Marc Jacobs, and I've used this a few times already, and there is so much left in there, and that's because Scentbird fills you up with eight times more the average sample. Super easy. All you do is just take a very short quiz on their website just so they could get a feel of what you like, and then from there, you can personally pick out which ones you want for that month, so there's no surprises. And you could get the Scentbird app also linked down below, which makes navigating the whole site very easy and very convenient. And again, use my code Haley to get your first month for only $11. And thank you so, so, so much again for Scentbird for sponsoring this video. And by supporting people like them, you're also supporting people like me to make videos for you guys. So fun, fun stuff. Okay, back to the video. Okay, anyway, recap. He was working at Costco and then he quit. That's where we're at. He quit Costco because he wanted to pursue YouTube. What he was doing on YouTube is exactly what he was doing off camera. Remember earlier, he had a track record of like trespassing and shoplifting. That's literally what he was doing in these videos. What's poppin' guys? Just got out of jail. I mean, like literally I got caught in the mall. They put break and enter on me. I'm in deep trouble, okay, guys? We're gonna be doing the overnight challenge, this time in a jail. We want to keep all them haters happy, too, so I figure I'm gonna do it in a jail. Everybody's been saying to do it. Let's try to get 25,000 likes on this one, guys. June 1st of 2016, he actually made two channels. J Station, where he would upload his 24 hours in like the mall, 24 hours in Walmart challenge. He also made J Vision, where he would just make random vlogs about his daily life. What's poppin'? How are you guys doing today? I just woke up not too long ago. I'm about to eat some breakfast. Today is gonna be a crazy day. I'm gonna be pranking some people outside with some poo. With some poo, okay? Like basically what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna take some $5 bills, I'm gonna smear shit on it, and I'm gonna put it down and record people picking it up. I think it's gonna be hilarious, okay? I think it's gonna be hilarious. The problem is, I don't know where to get some poo. Like, where do I get poo? Like, I don't have a dog. I don't know anybody on my block that has a dog, surprisingly. Last thing I could think of is to shit in a bag myself. You know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. So basically, I'm gonna eat a can of beans right now for breakfast. Now that channel didn't really have too much content on it, but the J Station and J Vision channel are still up today. 2017 rolls around and this is when he does his very first 3 a.m. challenge. Arguably why J Station was so popular is because he was said to be the very first person to start these 3 a.m. challenges. It was also around this time where J Station started to attract the attention of a lot of younger people. It was also around this time when YouTube came out with their set of rules. Remember the um, the Kean and JC video where they were like breaking every rule and like, and so J Station was like, oh my god i can't do like all of this trespassing stuff that i did before i have to really do this like 3 a.m stuff he actually try to promote to his audience like hey guys i actually have a patreon if you guys want to give me extra money so i could pursue making these like 24 challenge videos but literally no one subscribed to the patreon september when youtube was first demonetizing channels on a large scale Jason panicked and made a Patreon page and made a video begging people to go to his Patreon page and donate so he could keep making garbage content and it didn't work. At the time Jason got 70 patrons totaling right around $200. As of this moment his Patreon is still up and he has two patrons. And it just didn't work because Jason's audience doesn't have money, they're children. Remember how I said earlier he had two channels, J Station and J Vision? Well, he actually had a third channel called I'm J Station, but this was a channel he never really used because it was the channel that had all of like the harassment of Costco workers on it. So until, like I said earlier, when YouTube was going around demonetizing a bunch of channels, his J Station channel was actually one of them to get demonetized. So then he went to his 
his I'm J Station channel, he continued to do the same exact content that he did on the J Station channel, but now he was getting money for it. In 2017, all of his ads were on all of these videos because he was now getting monetized as well as reaching 1 million subscribers. The big thing with J Station is that he is always following the bandwagon. When all of the overnight challenges started to get hype, he started doing it, fidget spinners, hoverboards, he would constantly do whatever was trending so he would also get like tons of views as well. 2017 continues and he continues to do his same exact what was getting the most views at that time he would then do. December 31st is when Logan Paul uploaded his forest video and it was very very traumatic for a lot of people. J Station being the absolute gem that he is he then tweets the same exact day suicide forest i think yes that is so messed up and people called him out for it too including keemstar keemstar was the very first person to actually bring attention to j station as i said only like children were watching him before so no one really knew all of the messed up stuff that he was doing until Keemstar decided to call him out for it. That's right. This was the thumbnail of the video. The video now states, do not play the sister sister game in the side forest. Upload it on January 18th, 2018. Just days after Logan Paul was getting exposed for going to the suicide forest. That's right. Jay Station tried to capitalize this. In fact, that title is completely changed. The original title on that video was Overnight in the Japanese Suicide Forest Challenge Gone Wrong. Now you would think with him doing this that Jay Station would have been canceled right there. But no, he has children viewers. In response to Keemstar doing all of this, Jay Station actually decided to post a video response basically saying that Keemstar was jealous. Okay, so my goal is to get the most views. Obviously, that's not a bad thing. Stop saying it is. You're jealous. You're jealous. Stop. I know my audience, dude. Is it my, is it my fault that people want to click? People want to click on a dead body more than a picture that doesn't have it? People in majority want to click on that video more if there's a dead guy in it. What's that say? Nothing about me. Ask the community why they, why they wanna click on that video more. I want as many people to click on that shit as possible. Duh, duh. Okay, now as a, as a video creator, how am I gonna get across what we did in that video the best, okay? We went in there and we found some items of dead people, bro. I can't just hold up a tin can, bro. I have to get the, the message across that something went down, dude. That's something crazy happened. Whatever. I want to be a big fucking YouTuber, bro. So chill. Come on, Jason. Read the room. I beg you. Just read the room. No one here is jealous. So he continues on this rant, basically showing absolute no remorse for what he did. He kept on saying like, well, it's not my fault. What does that say about the people who are clicking on these things? What does that say about the person who's making these things? It's clearly very traumatic for a lot of people, including when Logan Paul did it, but for some reason that went right over his head and all he could see was the views and revenue that Logan was getting. So basically, after this video was uploaded, Keemstar clapped back at J Station, basically saying, listen, fool, you claimed I'm a leech, right? Your untalented, uncreative was so desperate for views, you had to leech off of the Logan Paul side forest vid. And if my fans did flag your vid, then your running will not help you in the future. Honestly, I'm not a fan of Keemstar, but I appreciate what he said. In response to this, J Station didn't really say anything because obviously he already got the views and the exposure that he wanted. So he just kind of moved on and didn't say anything about it. As I said earlier, J Station would do a lot of those like 3 a.m. challenges. So about a month later, he posted a don't play Fortnite at 3 a.m. <laughs> challenge, which like, what is that even supposed to mean? The thing about this is that the gameplay Play that he was using wasn't even his. It belonged to a very small YouTube creator named Lechose CZ. 
Boom! Boy! Yo, guys, it's too easy, man. Oh, God, we got 11 kills. Three, three. It was actually such, like, a stab, too, because throughout the gameplay, JayStation was saying, oh, this is too easy. This is too easy. Like, well, yeah, because you're just watching it. Um, and so... Hello. CZ finds the video, he watches the video, and he decides to just respectfully DM JayStation on Twitter. Just kind of like, hey, I just saw your video, uh, and I noticed you used my gameplay. I was just wondering why you did that. And also, can you take it down because you don't have my permission to use it? But JayStation just took it a whole different route, and he responds with itch, K-Y-S, I can use the gameplay if I want. I'm getting way more views off of your original video on mine. Fortnite owns it, not you. Obviously, terrible human being who says that and who does that in the first place. Why don't you just, I don't know, play it yourself? His audience is a bunch of eight-year-olds that don't have Twitter. So every time JayStation would get into a controversy or a scandal, it was never coming to the surface of his fans. So he just started to get more and more. Early of 2018 was around the time too where he started to make his more controversial videos such as drinking a gay potion from the dark web. There's nothing wrong with being gay, but I'm straight, guys. Like, I have no interest in the same sex at all, guys. Gay potion, guys. This is what it looks like right here. Look at this thing. Just one sip of this will turn you gay for one hour, guys. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Like, look, it's like, like, I like it like that. You know, I like my friends like that. Like, look, curvy. Like, look, I Yo, are you trying to make out with me? Are you sure, bro? I you messed up my makeup, Jay. What do you mean? I'm gonna have to punish you. I might have to spank you. No, I'm gonna relax, bro. Just make sure you guys go give it a like on my Instagram, okay? JayStation YT. Also claimed to FaceTime Jesus at 3 a.m. Oh, is that Jesus? God bless you, my children. No, I go. There's no way. No way. No way. That's Jesus. Yo, let me see your scars. If that's Jesus, let me see your scars. Never doubt me, my son. No. But again, only children are watching these videos. So when these videos would be published, no one would talk about it because no adults with an actual, you know, understanding of that this is wrong, no one like that was watching these videos. March of 2018 rolls around and he actually ends up getting arrested at Disney World and ends up on the news. Done. Well, Farah, you may have heard of Jason Etier. He's a YouTube star with legions of followers. He recently went to Disney World in Florida for a little R&R, &R, but he left feeling like a criminal. It's been one of my, like, lifelong dreams to go to Disney World. Like, who, who doesn't want to go to Disney World? The issue, what happened last weekend at Disney's Magic Kingdom in Florida? What happened to his bag containing his professional camera and cash? He tells me to walk ahead through the metal detector, so I do that. My back is now turned to the security officer that has my bag. His friend, another YouTube star, is recording him at security and is told to delete the video. How are you? We don't take photos of security at Walt Disney World. Oh. The pair convinced at least one of the security officers took and hid Etier's bag under the table. Etier insists the security head review the official video, but security won't do it. It seems like he was just trying to cover up any evidence of a security guard stealing from me in Disney World security check. After protesting, security officers tell Etia to leave. I'm, I'm going now. Go on. By this point, he's live streaming the interaction, and he's agreed to leave, although still accusing security as the video shows him walking away. Somebody stole from me and they're kicking me out, bro. Then, as he's leaving, Etier is arrested. The charge, trespassing and resisting arrest. I was arrested for trespassing while I was leaving. And now they're arresting him. The officer who arrested Etier is an off-duty sheriff's deputy. Later, he's released from jail on bail after paying $1,200. You think I'll leave you hanging, dog? <laughs> Adamant he did nothing wrong, standing up for himself in the face of what he said was theft. Now, since Jay Station was on the news, he was getting even more attention, and so then in April, April of 2018, that is when he hit 2 million subscribers. June 18th of 2018, that is when it was released that unfortunately the musician XXXTentacion um, had passed away. It was a very tough time for a lot of people, not only if you listen to his music, but if you were his family, his friend. It's unexpected and so it shocked a lot of people. 
and J Station, always thinking of himself, saw how much attention that the death was getting. So he decided to post just two days after the death, Ouija board at 3 a.m. challenge, we summoned XXX Tentacion. In the video, which makes it even more sick, that you can definitely tell that it is so fake. Throughout the video, they're doing the Ouija board and you can hear knocks and things are knocking down and he actually spells out the word demon, inferring that XXX was in hell. Positivity. Yeah. Yo, what the frick? Dude, what the hell? That scared this. Bro, Yo. the freaking noise, dude. Yeah, the candle right now is flickering right now. Demon, it dude, it just smelled up demon like so fast. Let's take a, can we take a bite? We gotta get out of here, man. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. Let's find out. Bro, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking. Let's ask what the demon's name is. Okay, one more question. What the frick? What the hell? Bro, bro. And not only that, but at the end, he found a weird box and he said that if this video gets 100,000 likes, he's going to open it as well as in the beginning of the video, he said one like equals one prayer, trying to play algorithm magic. Just like button right now, guys. Let's get 100k for X. What the hell? No, no one Yo, touch it. It's a box. What Dude, the, what it's you a doing? box. It's a box. What the hell? Whoa, what the whoa, frick? Whoa, whoa. We got to hit 100,000. 100k. And we'll open this, guys. Smash the like button right now for XXX Tentacion. We actually communicated with. Now, when he uploaded this, it was a huge disrespect to the family, especially because it was just two days after the death like the funeral hadn't even happened yet and he was already doing stuff like this a lot of people again were looking to this J Station channel and being like dude what is wrong with you like this is someone's life we're talking about this isn't just some like random YouTube challenge in response to all of the backlash that he was getting he never said anything about it and it's mostly due to the fact that he didn't find any remorse in it and you can tell because uh, just a few months later in September of 2018 that is when another musician had passed away named Mac Miller again it was very sudden so a lot of people were you know very shocked to hear the news and the next day J Station had uploaded the same type of Ouija board challenge as he did for X, but now he was doing it with Mac Miller. And not only was he doing it with Mac Miller, he dragged Ariana Grande into the situation. In the video, it basically discusses that J Station quote unquote loved Mac Miller, but the only thing he mentions that Mac Miller has done is dated Ariana Grande. One of my favorite things about Mac Miller is he dated Ariana Grande. This girl is like my dream girl. I would do anything to just date this girl. And Mac Miller actually did it, guys. Big shout out to him for that. Jay then turned on a speaker which played static and showed a Mac Miller music video with the opacity turned down and claimed he was trying to talk to him. So he then just mocks the death of Mac Miller like he did with X, but now he was dragging Ariana Grande into the situation who is very much alive. And so within the video, he was contacting Mac Miller and he was basically just playing Ariana Grande's music videos up on the screen and saying that it was Mac doing it. Again, this was very, very disrespectful to not only Ariana Grande, but also his family, his fans. People were hating on him for it. But again, when J Station got all of the views and money that he wanted, all of his ads were on like his revenue was coming in also in the video like the x one he said one like equals one prayer meaning again that he only cared about getting his views and getting in the algorithm i literally do the same exact makeup look every time just in different colors graphic liner is my favorite thing to do okay just let me be. Apparently this situation really made J Station realize that, hey, maybe I should take a break from this. And so it wasn't until June of 2019, the very next year, where he got into another scandal where he hypothetically staged his own home break-in. I'm gonna have to get a new house. I'm gonna have to move. It's like 6, 6.30 at night and I haven't slept since yesterday. I was editing my video for you guys. All of a sudden, three dudes in masks 
run up in my house, choke holding me. I was going in and out of consciousness. There was blood everywhere. They say, where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the Rolex? I don't keep money in my house. I'm not dumb. In the video, he basically says that he was one day editing a video and then that is when people just walked into his house because, you know, when you live in million dollar mansions, you just tend to leave all of your doors unlocked. People came in and started beating up Jay Station, asking him where the money was and where the Rolexes were. Back with another banger video, your boy got up yo people just ran in my house and messed me up like super bad yo these fuck come in here with ski masks and shit because they pussies come in here on the floor so i was editing my video on the couch over there they came in look at the blood on the fucking wall blood all on my couch took me down in the basement i'm gonna show you what, what's in the basement all right, so I struggled there. They f up on the floor for trying to escape. I go down, come in here. We go down in the basement. Tie me up with fucking chains. They put me here. They're taking pictures of me. Looking around my house. He comes back down here. They grabbed a fucking sledgehammer. It was tied to my pants. So I took off my pants and I freed myself. I ran out here, out of this window in my boxers. My keys were in the corner there because they flew out of my pocket when we were rolling around. When I was chained up, they say, you call the police, we're gonna come back here and kill you. I went straight to the fucking police, bruh. The fuck am I supposed to do, man? Took him to the basement, beated him up even more, and then for some reason just left. And then that was it. He just left, Jay Station being the Superman that he is. He freed himself from the chains and he drove to not the hospital, but his friend's house. And then from his friend's house, he drove to the hospital. And then from the hospital, he drove to the police station. Yeah, the timeline does get very scattered. He says in the video of him in the hotel that he went to the police, but then in the video of him showing his house, he never mentions going to the police. He only mentions going to the hospital. And then in that video, he also mentions going to a friend's house. But if that just happened to you and you are like going in and out of consciousness, how are you even able to drive? Maybe like his friend drove him to the hospital, but then if his friend drove him to the hospital and then drove the J back to his house to get his car and then went back, and then when did he go to the police station? It was actually uh, Charlie, aka Critical, who made a video talking about this entire situation and breaking down the video about how fake it was. Look at this, man. Filth on the floor. So now what you're about to see is the fanfic J station is conjured up for this. I don't know if it really is makeup on his face or if it did get fucked. Up, but I can assure you it's not from whatever kind of story he's peddling with this. Just look at these footprints here that he uses as evidence. This looks like some shit out of Scooby-Doo when the mystery gang is following an obvious trail. What kind of dirt do you have outside your house, Jay Station, to lead to these kind of tracks? They were, anyway, they held a knife on me. Here's a knife. They held this shit on me. They said they're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me. Where's the money? Where's the Rolex? And it was at this point I knew the video had to be fake. If I'm wrong, Jay Station, I'll issue an apology and give you like $10 or something maybe, but I know I'm not. And I even asked a real police officer what would happen here. For many, many inconsistencies, like him going to the hospital, but then when he shows his face, he still has dried up blood and no bandages at all. He also shows that he has a big gash on his head, but again, just no bandages. You would think that a big gash like that, they would keep you in the hospital. And then in the video, he has like a hospital band on, which again, makes no sense because he has no bandages and he still has dry blood all over his face since this had happened his house is technically a crime scene now if three people came in and beat him up and used like all these weapons on him these people were to actually use all of these things and he did call the police the police would immediately go there and examine all fingerprints every single tool that he used and again like 
you are uh, like robbing someone, don't you think you would take the evidence with you to make sure that your fingerprints aren't on anything? So yeah, he literally shows in the video, he's just like, this is the weapon they used on me whilst getting his fingerprints on everything. And he was again, just sleeping in that house. To this day, I am sick and tired of having this, you know, hate directed at me from this YouTuber called Penguins, Penguin Zero. 6.1 million views telling everybody I lied about being beaten and robbed. Not, and I even asked a real police officer what would happen here. Testing or something? Then this guy says, it would for sure be in an evidence room somewhere if it was used in a home invasion, assault, and robbery. Well, guess what? It is in a freak, it is in an evidence room. It is in an evidence room. Bro, when the police released me, they just let me go back in the freaking house. I had my mom in there the next day cleaning and stuff. She asked the police, she's like, so can I clean? They say, go ahead. Then about a day later, they came in there and they took the chain, they took the sledgehammer, they took the knives, they took everything, they took the blood. June 19th of 2019, that is when the famous influencer Etika had unfortunately passed away. Again, it was super sudden and everybody was very shocked to hear the news. Everybody was giving their prayers and condolences to the family, the friends everyone but Jay Station because he makes another Ouija board video about Etika. When the attention is away from Jay Station, God forbid, it must be back on him again. He then starts to make it about himself again. He makes a video, but this time he's kind of learning from his mistakes because he doesn't include a Ouija board. So instead to make up for it, he mocks depression. These YouTubers are doing this, making five different videos about being depressed. Bruh, I'm sad too, bruh. But I'm not about to say I got depression, dude. You don't got depression, my dude. You don't got depression. You're doing it for attention. So next time you sad, suck it up, bruh. And just give your, your, your fans what they want to see. Basically just start saying that if you don't have what Etika had, then you're obviously faking depression. And he also kind of addresses the ad situation. As I said, on all of these videos, he would have ads on them saying that if you don't have ads or if you do have ads, it doesn't matter. Who cares if you don't put YouTube ads on? You're doing it for attention. Cause buddy dies and you're gonna get 500,000 people watching you that you never did before, bro. They're gonna watch your future videos that got ads on them, bro. In response to this video, Charlie, AKA Critical, like I was mentioning earlier, made another video about how Jay Station was extremely disrespectful to Etika. Yo, where he says he's using a Ouija board to talk to Etika gone wrong. Mac Miller was plugging Jason's merch, telling all the children to buy Jason's merch and Mac Miller might come back to life. He did the same thing with XXXTentacion's death. It's him riding a high horse, saying you can't clickbait people's suicide, and that you're not allowed to be sad about it, and that he's the only one that's really fighting for Etika by clickbaiting people into clicking on his video. Now that being said, he did donate $2,500 to a charity, but the video is also monetized with ads on it, a bunch of ads on it. So he's making far more money off Etika's death than he's giving to the family. October of 2019 is when Jay Station introduced his girlfriend, Alexia Morano. Oh my God, why am I doing that? Oh God. I think I just gave myself astigmatism. <laughs> first met, Jay Station just thought that she was a party girl until later down the road when they really started to get to know each other. He actually ended up really, really liking her and that is when they started dating. I mean, no hate to Alexia, but like, if you see someone posting things like this on the internet, what in your mind is like, yup, that's my man. I I promise you there are many fish in the sea that don't do things like this. How Jay Station had introduced her to the videos is that he bought her off of the dark web. Oh my god! Well, you're welcome to stay here tonight if you want. I mean, 
Now, when they first started doing these videos, Alexia was actually pretty nervous because she, you know, didn't really know she wanted to be associated with something like this. J Station just tried to confirm to her that it's fine, like people are going to talk regardless, but at the end of the day, this is what people want and this is what gets you money. And so Alexia was like, okay, like I guess I'll try it out with you. Okay, so a whole time I was trying to be nice to Alexia. I was just like, okay, like maybe, you know, like maybe she just felt super awkward doing these videos. In my head, I was like, oh, okay, these are only like 3 a.m. challenges and stuff like that. Until I saw this next video, that just went out. I was like, yeah, mm, not really anymore. Like, oh, wow, that uh, is not right whatsoever. I'm gonna roll the clip. Trigger warning, big, big trigger warning. If you are sensitive to like blood or anything like that, because in the next clip, there are lots of it, as well as Alexia sitting in a tub of it. Skip to this time frame and you can you know skip it um but when like that video is over i'm going to talk about it basically what happened is that alexia was trying to play a prank on jay saying that she died and then she was in a tub of like blood basically and again it is like pretty intense Dream team, as you guys can probably already tell from the title of this video i'm pranking my boyfriend jay For days i've been telling jay that there's been this spooky stalker guy who's been following me around our building. Jay is already scared enough for my safety as it is. So today, when I FaceTime Jay, I'm gonna get our roommate, Amin MoTV, to be disguised as a robber who's gonna attack me on FaceTime. I feel like this prank is going so well. I can't wait to see Jay's crazy hey, reaction. Alexia, what? just calling you right now. All right, that sounds good, Alexia. Okay, okay, go quick, because he's probably gonna be here any minute. Oh, Where's it going? Oh my God, Alexia! I don't understand how these two like fully grown adults that had the you know option to be like hey no maybe let's not do this I understand that like Alexia could have been in a very very toxic relationship where she could have been forced into these things and the fact that their audience is like eight years old their audience is so young and they're exposing them to like stuff like this. It's just so messed up. That is when they not only started making videos together, but they also created their own collab channel called Dream Team. On there, they would post random videos together, kind of similar of what Jay Station was doing on his channel, but now he was with Alexia. Now later down the road, their relationship personally started to get a little bit more serious. He was starting to be a little emotionally abusive to her. One night, I was sleeping Jay decided to take my phone and look through every single message I had on my text every single message on my Instagram on my Twitter even though these messages weren't even bad and were from years before I even met Jay Jay still thought that because of these messages I was gonna cheat on him Jay told me that he does not want me to have Instagram. He does not want me to have Facebook. He does not want me to have Snapchat. He wanted to completely erase all of my social media. And you guys have to understand that this is not a normal thing for someone to ask of someone in a relationship but they actually ended up moving in together. And in this place, I didn't mention this man earlier, but his name is Ahmed TV, who would basically do the same exact videos as J Station and would even do videos with J Station. And he lived with J Station. And so when Alexia moved in, she was not only moving in with J Station, how many times can I say J Station in a single sentence? It was only like two weeks of dating that he actually told me that I could live with him in Toronto if I wanted to. So I moved in with Jay and his roommate, Ahmed. January of 2020, 
Ahmed, Jason, and Alexia were trying to figure out a video idea and that's when Ahmed came up with the idea of, hey, why don't we fake my death, like tell everyone I died, and then do a Ouija board challenge. It could be a whole series and then in a few days I resurrect or something. Right off the bat, like what? <laughs> no maybe not maybe let's not do that i don't know i'm just guessing that sounds like something we shouldn't do that's when ahmed decided to switch the direction and look at alexia and be like you know what alexia maybe you should do it maybe we should fake your death and immediately alexia was very uncomfortable with the idea but obviously you know when you're kind of put in that hey, you're going to do this situation. It's kind of like you don't want to be a problem. So you're like, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll do it. Okay, great. We're all on board. Let's follow in with the idea. And so they did. January of 2020, JayStation made a video basically saying how Alexia had passed away in a car accident. <laughs> I never wanted to make a video like this, ever. Last night, we lost Alexia. <laughs> Panel together called Dream Team. We just hit 300,000 subscribers. Her dream was just to get a million subscribers and we were so close to doing that guys. Lexia came out later on saying that she was super uncomfortable with the idea in the first place but also that she had no idea what Jason was going to say. Up until this point I was not a part of any of them. It was just Jay and I didn't even know what he was going to say in those videos before he posted them. So when other people were watching it on YouTube for the first time, I was also watching it on YouTube for the first time. I did not appreciate the fact that he said the crash was about a drunk driver. Immediately when this video was uploaded, people were freaking out because she had died. I had friends messaging me from Ottawa. I was getting thousands of phone calls. My family was getting thousands of phone calls. My dad, who's so sick, is getting so many phone calls. And my aunts and my uncles and my uncle who has a business and has clients, his clients were asking him about me, saying, is Alexia dead or not? And meanwhile, I was not allowed to say anything to anyone. Alexia had told Jason, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. You need to tell everyone that I'm alive because everyone's calling me and contacting me and my family. And Jason even told her she was not allowed to say a single word to anyone because if she did, then she would mess up the entire plan. And obviously she didn't care about the plan anymore. She was telling people that she was alive. And so it started to circulate that she was indeed actually alive the initiative behind all of this like the reason why they wanted to do this so bad because like i said earlier they had a channel called dream team and they really wanted to reach a million subscribers on their dream team channel j station in the video said to everyone that alexia's dream was to reach a million subscribers on the dream team channel so then people would then subscribe to the dream team channel but then when she resurrects in a few days they have a million subscribers on the channel. First we were gonna say she died. Then we were gonna do a Ouija board video, which I did, call her at 3 a.m. Then we were gonna resurrect her, get more followers on our Dream Team channel. And I put my entire YouTube at risk to do it my channel at risk to do it. And so to make matters even worse, not only Jay Station made a video about her death, but Ahmed TV, the guy that he lived with, even made a video himself talking about her death. I never really wanted to make this video, but as you guys know, something crazy just happened. <laughs> so my friend Jay just lost his girlfriend, Alexia guy. Did I put on a wig? Should I put on a wig? Have I ever put on a wig for these videos? I think I'm gonna go put on a wig. Word started to get around that she was actually alive and that is when a YouTuber by the name of Ordinary Gamers released a video basically talking about how Alexia was proven to be actually alive. In fact, his girlfriend has passed away, apparently. Why the f
Am I looking at an ad on someone that just passed away? Filthiest things that I have seen on this platform. And the fact that Jay is still on YouTube uploading videos, having that shit monetized and getting out there. On the same day that Ordinary Gamers uploads this video, JayStation actually uploaded a video going to her memorial and Ordinary Gamers debunks that whole thing as well said that they have passed away in a drunk driving incident that's believed to be in Toronto, I think specifically on the Queensway Road, right? Uh, I've driven by there, I haven't seen anything. I figured on a major road like that, you know, there would be some yeah. form of a news agency reporting on the fatality of an individual. So I couldn't find any report, couldn't find an obituary. So he basically just, this is so weird, okay. I got this wig for Halloween because I wanted to be Uma Thurman from Pulp Fiction, but then I accidentally ordered brown and now I just wear it because I fantasize about having brown hair with bangs. And when Ordinary Gamers exposed the entire thing, people were super mad at Jay, basically saying that how dare he make fun of like people who actually have died in drunk driver accidents. The farther they started to follow in with this narrative that Alexia was dead, people revisited Jay Station's channel and realized that in December, just a month earlier, where he bought a slave off of the dark dark web and that slave was a person of color. Obviously I do not support slavery at all guys so tonight we are going to buy one of these slaves and set him free. He's there. Hello? He can wait to get it clean? Oh my god. Are you okay? Do you need any water or anything? That's just so disgusting and disrespectful on so many levels. The fact that he would even do it in the first place, but then have a person of color doing it. It's just like the whole video is so insanely hard to watch and extremely uncomfortable because it's like, honestly, how could you do something like that and then think that it's okay? Who told you that 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 was okay in the first place? It's just so dehumanizing and disgusting and... This man is scum of the earth. Who in their right mind would think that's okay or think that's, oh my God, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like it's so, so, so messed up. He only got up to the memorial before he decided to release that Alexia was not dead. Expected all this to stay on YouTube and it didn't. Alexia was never dead at all basically posted a video of himself crying on his closet floor saying that Alexia wasn't dead and in fact Alexia was on board with the entire thing since the very very beginning. Hey guys like she was down to make to make these videos with me like she was nervous or well, I told her it didn't matter and these people are gonna talk but they're always gonna talk they're gonna talk regardless it didn't matter and she was okay and she agreed to do it. And that he was editing a video and then her dad was calling her being like, if you don't tell everyone that you're alive, then I'm gonna go to the news and I'm gonna tell the news that you're alive. And I said, Jay, my dad is telling me that he needs you to tell the world that I'm alive or he's gonna go to the news himself and tell them. So then Jay ends up getting really mad, saying, tell your dad to not block my money. I don't get a part of his business. He shouldn't get a part of mine. At the end of that conversation, he said, why don't you tell your dad to write me an apology letter because he's trying to block my money. So at that point, I had enough and I could not continue doing what Jay wanted me to be doing anymore. So Jay told me to wake him up in a couple hours because he hadn't slept yet. And then I grabbed my stuff and I left. So Alexia expressed these concerns to Jay. Jay shrugged it off. Jay explains his side of the story. I feel trapped right now. <sighs> she woke up at 7, th around 8 a.m. when I just posted the video and she said she just got off the phone with her dad and her dad's yelling at her. He wants me to say to the world that it was just a prank. She's, Alexia's not really dead. Or he was gonna go to the news and tell everybody that Alexia wasn't dead. And I told her that her parents, it's none of her business. I don't mess with his dad's business. He, he shouldn't mess with ours. I said, can you wake me up at two? She said, sure. 
and then she leaves. And I woke up at 4 p.m. instead of 2 p.m. I saw her cologne in the bathroom was gone. I noticed her laptop was gone. Her purse is gone. She didn't take my keys for the elevator and my building that I live in. She wasn't answering all my texts. I noticed that all my previous texts from her were all deleted into my phone. Like she went in my phone, deleted all our pictures. She deleted our conversations. I go onto my laptop. She deleted videos that we recorded together on my laptop. I didn't know that she wanted me to delete these videos. I thought her dad wants me to delete these videos. But then a few hours later, the police show up at his door saying that he has a warrant for his arrest because Alexia had gone to the police station and told the police that he had abused her. The officers take that report. We are just as detailed yeah. to come arrest him. Yeah, as far as last night, we were good. Yeah, yeah I don't know I what the yeah, was not here. And then you guys come in and say oh. I assault her. That's an allegation. Okay, I, know, I understand. I do understand. That's your job to come here and. Yeah. yeah. I have to call my lawyer. Yeah. Do that. yeah. You're fucking psycho. You are honest to God crazy. I have been a good person to you, Alexia. You're a trash human being. Look online. Everyone says shit about you. You take. Everybody hates you. This is just a taste of how Alexia is in real life, guys. She even made me unfollow all of my fans on my Instagram. In case you guys didn't notice my Instagram, I'm following like two people right now. I just started following new people, but it was at zero. She made me unfollow all of my fans. I have this one fan that's been my fan for like ever. Her name is Jay Angel on Instagram. She was actually jealous of me talking to this girl. I said, why are you jealous of a 14 year old girl who's been my fan for the last three years all of her pictures on her Instagram are of me she's a real fan of me she likes me a lot and I appreciate my fans don't really appreciate you talking shit about me to my fans after I try to help you succeed no fans, except young kids who are delusional if it wasn't for my fans she wouldn't have any subscribers at all and she completely disrespects he's treating this like a TV show like this is something we should assume is fake, but it's not a TV show when you're using people's real names and real lives. Late 2020, where his whole I'm J Station channel was demonetized. Can I get out? Can I get out? So then after all of this happened, Jay then decides to hang it up and he's like you know what i'm not gonna do youtube anymore i've done a lot of stupid things in my life stupid things for attention on youtube and i'm really not proud of who i became i really lost who i was as a person in pursuit of success i have so much of an influence because of so many subscribers i have these other smaller channels that are doing the same thing using dead people for attention like I, I feel responsible for that messed up too many times and i gotta change and i gotta change for myself i gotta change for my family people who are close to me but so far i've deleted the xxx video some videos i did with uh, drinking a gay potion i don't have any problem with gay people it's just it could be pretty insensitive like i i, I did a lot of stereotypical stuff so again sorry for anybody I did wrong ever. He then needed to make money. So he went to the Dream Team channel, the channel that him and Alexia had, changed the title to 666, and he now made that his new channel, but now it was being monetized again and he was getting money for it. YouTube caught wind of this and they were like, hey, maybe we don't want this guy on our platform anymore. So instead of demonetizing everything, they just decided to flat out delete everything. Okay, I got banned from YouTube. Um, there's one girl in particular, like my ex-girlfriend, laughing about it, like saying, haha, Jay got banned. He's never gonna be able to get a real job. Yeah, I'm persuasive. That's exactly why I'm gonna be successful in my life. Pitch anything. I don't need a job. I don't want a job. Job. I'm never gonna have a job. I haven't had a job in the last five years. YouTube was taking up all of my time just to make a, a, a small portion portion of money. He deleted his I'm J Station channel and his 666 channel. It, he tries to defend himself by saying that I don't understand why I got blamed for it when so many other people were doing it too. The fact of how random this really was because I faked someone's death. You know, Mick Juggernaut gets faked his dad's death live on YouTube, bro. Everybody thought it was real. The police had thousands of people 
called the police station. There's been YouTubers faking their death that they died of cancer. They're good. There's always gonna be bigger issues in this world. Like, you, you don't think I can concentrate on two things at the same time? Even though the world is bad, what you did was also bad. March of 2021, uploaded a video to Instagram influencing people not to get the vaccine. You guys, something, while I still have the chance, because as you guys know, I got banned on YouTube, made a tweet warning people about the COVID vaccine and how it's causing deaths. And 80% of people who take the second COVID vaccine shot experience insane injuries, including severe shivers where you can never move again, your skin melting off of your legs. We need to stop this. The government has no right to tell you that you're not essential. Everybody is essential. As soon as... Now I want you to get up and dance because you know what Instagram did? They deleted his account. Hi, babe. Send us a postcard. He doesn't have a Twitter account anymore, so I'm assuming that Twitter took it down or either he took it down himself. And he was on Instagram, he was really big into like investing in cryptocurrency. I just made 30K in two weeks off of cryptocurrency. I don't need a job. Don't invest in cryptocurrency at 3 a.m. <laughs> That's literally gonna be his videos if he ever gets a channel back. As far as Alexia, she still posts on her channel. She is trying to get better, which, you know, as she should. Should I put on a jacket? <laughs> Does this look cool? I feel like a spy. You know how much of a terrible person you have to be in order for your accounts to be taken down on every single platform? That is embarrassing. It's a wrap. I feel like it's a, I, honestly, I feel like it was a wrap back in 2016 when he first made the channel. Sometimes when I wanna have brown short hair without the commitment, I put this on and it's like, give a big thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this. Oh my God, should I put on a scent? What screams like spy? Okay, the video is over. Um, Goodbye if you wanna leave, but now I'm just like playing. So this is Kenzie by Kenzie. I feel like this is what that would wear. That is strong. Literally with this stuff, you just need one spray and you are done. It would honestly suck as a spy. They would tell me like in my earpiece, like, okay, he's walking by, pick up your cup. And I'd be. All my socials are down below as well if you wanna follow me on Instagram, TikTok, or Snapchat. I've also been contemplating a vlogging channel, so if that's something you would watch, uh, just tell me and I will do it, maybe, I don't know. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and do something that makes you happy today.